This is One on One. Steve Adubato here. We're uh, broadcasting remotely from Montclair, New Jersey, in my home. We're joined by our longtime friend, Dr. Joel Bloom, who is, in fact, the president of New Jersey Institute of Technology. Good to speak to you, Joel. Very good to see you, Steve, and an opportunity to speak to you. Yeah, we're taping uh, in April, on April the 8th, long-term implications. What do you believe the long-term implications are, Dr. Bloom, not just on the economy, but also on students and their families, students in higher ed? Well, on students and their families, uh, it's going to be profound. Uh, many of our students, you know who our students are, first in their family, uh, typically lower income, very often Pell eligible or Pell grant recipients. That's that federal $6,000 grant that they get. Um, many of them, many of them expect to work uh, part-time some when they're going to uh, the university. Many of them, of course, expect to work all summer long so that they have not necessarily the tuition and fee money, but certainly the money to live with. All of that has come to an abrupt halt. All of that has become uh, come to an abrupt halt. The same thing with their families, unemployment. We've seen unemployment you know, increasing 100 plus, 200, 300 percent. So those are the parents. Those, so that's the large impact on our undergraduate population. We must be prepared to do everything we can. If we admitted them, we still want them to come, we will resolve the financial issues over time. But do not think that you can't come, whether it's to our university or another college and university, it's incumbent to us to make this work on the behalf of our currently enrolled students and our future students and their families. So very concerned, financial, emotional, uh, based on the, the feedback I've gotten, uh, you know, a lot of people are stressed out. Uh, these young men and women who often come to our universities, they are truly stressed out. The isolation, the inability to do what they ordinarily do on a daily basis, that's affecting everyone. But again, these are students who had thought they had uh, a career queued up to attend or continue to attend a university. Major, major disruption. So uh, we're trying, to, we're doing well and delivering using technology. We're Let's talk about that, Joe. University using technology. We are highly successful with our online remote education. Um, and we are also doing, obviously, support services, counseling, advising to students, again, using technology. Dr. Bull, let's go back a little bit. By the way, let me also let folks know that NJIT is one of the higher ed partners that we have at the Caucus Educational Corporation. Joel is also a, uh, a board member, a trustee of our not-for-profit. Joel, go back to the question of uh, digital learning. We're speaking digitally now. We're using Zoom. You also use other technology. Would you say, is it WebEx? WebEx, yeah. Okay. So here's the question. Do you believe, and again, we're taping this program in April. It'll be seen later April, May, June, and because we want to make it relevant. We're not the news. Check out NJTV, Metro Focus, other platforms for day-to-day -day information. Here's the question, Joel. Do you believe that what we're experiencing in this pandemic will change the way higher ed functions six months from now, a year from now, long-term? Absolutely, yes. Um, student, first of all, 70 plus percent of our faculty found that not only that they think they're very good at the uh, online and the remote learning, they like it. Uh, in fact, in a meeting with faculty, uh, we have something called the Faculty Senate yesterday, one of them suggested to me, we do much more of this. And that's a, that's a good thing. One, we can reach more people. You know, we have many, many more applications than we have seats. But, you know, using this technology, it's not necessarily about seats. It's about having enough faculty to cover courses. Um, so we will see increased online learning with students, particularly undergraduates, who we always did not proffer uh, under, under online learning for undergraduates. We've always used it with our master's degree students. We have about 25 uh, online professional master's degrees. That's gonna change, Steve, absolutely correct. Uh, students are reporting 
a little lower rate than our faculty, feeling that they are uh, both uh, expert and, and doing well in, the, in this very, very sudden shift. So I, I think the future of education, of instruction has been changed forever. We will always have bricks and mortar. We will always have seats in the classroom labs. A lot of what we do is lab-based. Uh, if you're in a nursing program, uh, that's not a discipline we offer, but that's very lab-based. Those are very large programs. But obviously, again, most much of engineering uh, is lab-based. So that's, we'll still have bricks and mortar. It'll expand mm -hmm. our ability to teach more students in-state, nationally, and globally. So that will be all a part of that change. Dr. Joel Bloom and JIT, we have a couple minutes left real quick. You and I have had lots of conversations about innovation. You are part of our series called The Future of Innovation, or The State of Innovation in New Jersey. Question, the role of NJIT in particular as it relates to connecting to the world of healthcare. And you have a maker space there that's being, I don't want to get into the weeds here, but the truth is you are helping hospitals, healthcare organizations in this crisis and moving forward by being an active part of the solution. Talk about it. So we've been producing PPE. We've also donated- Personal whatever. protective equipment. I'm sorry, uh, go ahead. Thank you, personal protective equipment. We've mastered uh, a, not, not 3D printing, but actually cutting and gluing together the facial shield that is in great demand uh, by first responders as well as healthcare workers. Uh, we're probably at about at least 500 plus, most of which have gone uh, to the uh, Office of Emergency Management in Essex County where we reside, but we've also sent some other materials to other counties and hospitals. Uh, we are, uh, we're involved in helping to, uh, to make parts for ventilators um, that are breaking down, obviously, uh, right. based on their overuse. So we're into the PPE, we're into the repair and the replacement of parts for some critically needed equipment. We're in the middle of an innovation project. Um, how do you create these very movable, mobile, portable ICUs? Um, we're working with a, a foundation, um, a hospital, and uh, some of our faculty and staff. Um, so we are attempting to innovate while sure. we anticipate and solve the problems of the current COVID-19 that are in front of us. Uh, Dr. Joel Bloom, president of NJIT, will continue talking in the future about these issues. These, uh, these issues are critically important now, two months from now, six months from now, a year from now. Joel, all the best. You take care. You stay well, too. Thank you. You got it. Steve Adubato, we'll catch you next time. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, the Russell Berry Foundation, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Investors Bank, the Northward Center, New Jersey Sharing Network, United Airlines, NJM Insurance Group, and by the Fidelco Group. Promotional support provided by ROINJ and by Meadowlands Chamber. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.